Okay, today we're going to be connecting up all these electrical um, interfaces. So first thing we're going to do is go take the 12 volt power source. We're going to get, attach this connector to 12 volts and the battery connector to 12 volt. Okay, so this is the uh, connector we just talked about uh, that goes to the 12 volt source. This goes to the battery. So we're going to take the positive terminals and connect them to the input of the DC to DC converter. And we'll slide the wires in under both sides of the screw terminal um, and screw that down nice and tight. So we have a wire going under either side. And we'll do the same with the negative. that in. Let's get that in. Now these wires have ferrules on the end of them. I'll show you what that is in a moment. That keeps the individual strands on the wire from uh, going places they shouldn't. So if you zoom in a little, you can kind of see what we've done there. Is to just put a wire under either side of those screw terminals. Now let's do the 5 volt portion. If you're wondering what all the bumping noise is, it's this one. Okay, we've just connected the 12 volt signals. Now let's connect the 5 volt. So we have one wire that goes up this bit with the gray connector. 5 volt comes out of the regulator, goes up through the switch, comes down to a three way splice. Um, and then the ground return path is another three way splice that goes to the ground terminal of the converter. So let's do that in real life. Okay, to do this three way splice, I've basically taken all three of the wires. And I realize it's a four-way splice now, uh, but we have the wire that goes to the switch, the wires coming down to the fan. This is, uh, this wire goes to the network switch. This goes to the physical power switch. This will go to the Raspberry Pi, um, and then this wire goes to the fan. So I'll show you how to use a ferrule quickly. Now the color of these ferrules indicates their size, so I think a gray one might work. So what I did is just twist the wires together. You can see they're not quite coming out the end there. Then I'm going to take a crimper and probably use this hole to just smash all those wires together. There we go. And changing compartments, realize I didn't bring the right heat shrink, but you'll want to put a piece of heat shrink over that. Um, now for the negative wires, uh, we'll do another three-way splice. Actually, what we're going to do here is we're going to cheat a little because one of these wires already has a ferrule on it. Um, I'm going to uh, put this ground ferrule um, onto the terminal, negative terminal, and then that ground ferrule onto the negative terminal. So it's the same thing as a three-way splice. We're just using the screw terminal uh, as part of it. So um, now it's a little more clear what's going on, hopefully. So I'll go through this a little bit more slowly. So we have 5 volts coming out of the regulator on the positive terminal here. So you may want two windows open to understand this, but the 5 volts will come out. It will go out through the, up to the switch and back. And then all that 5 volts, uh, 5 volts comes into this node here, or this um, shared uh, crimp point. And the 5 volts will go to the fan, it will go out to the network switch, and it will go to the Raspberry Pi. And then all of their current will return on these black wires. So this will actually just hang out in space, free space. It doesn't get terminated anywhere. You would put a piece of heat shrink on there. And then these ground wires, um, we'll, I will 
terminate under this screw here. here, which goes to the network switch, and we'll route it down through here and plug it into the switch. Um, and you could zip tie that in there if you want. Uh, the fan is all routed. Uh, we'll plug the uh, 12 volt power into the battery. Um, then we'll take the power for the Pi down here, and that will plug into the Pi, like that. Um, and now these two will just route up here. And just once again, even though I'm not showing it, you will want a piece of heat shrink on there. Um, so now we basically have the entire power side of this done. We just have two um, connectors that will go up, up to the faceplate. So on the faceplate, um, this 5 volt switch will get connected um, right here. So these connectors are really hard to do with one hand. Okay, so like that, and then this power switch will, oh, just set that there, the power switch will connect right there. So I'm going to pause it, try and find a 12 volt power supply, and see if this will boot up. Okay, so all I've done is connect the power wires. Um, I'm going to connect the uh, monitor to the Pi, and then we're going to try and switch this thing on. And I really apologize that I'm always trying to do things one-handed. Got it. Okay, so there you have what we just did. And then I have the front panel here. The front panel has all these wires coming out of it. It looks super intimidating. But really all that's going on is you have your Ethernet cables and your USB cables. And all we have left to do is just plug them into the right spots. For now, though, I've just connected the monitor. Um, the monitor also has a uh, USB cable that enables the touchscreen function. So let's flip this on. You should see, yes, the Pi powered up, the network switch powered up. Um, I thought the monitor would turn on. Maybe I need to connect the USB. Okay. I think maybe that USB on the monitor also powered it. Hey, there we go. Okay. So, so that's, that's it. Um, in the next video, I'm just going to go over how to connect all these up. Um, and then where to plug them in on the back. But it's super self-explanatory. Like, if you have a USB cable, plug it into a USB port. Um, and then all of the Ethernet cables get plugged into the switch. And then you just need to connect one cable um, from the Pi to the Ethernet switch, and you're done. So uh, we're really close. And thank you to the cat for letting me use the cat stand as a really <laughs> chinky uh, uh, camera tripod. So, thank you, Kitty. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your help. Good kitty. <laughs>